My name is Tim Tyler, and I am a physical therapist and athletic trainer. I trained at the Nicholas Institute of Sports Medicine and Athletic Trauma for approximately 12 years. I then came up here to Scars, New York, where I opened a private practice in physical therapy and have been practicing up in Scarsdale at Pro Sports Physical Therapy of Westchester for the last 13 years. One of my interests at the Nicholas Institute of Sports Medicine and Athletic Trauma has been hamstring strains. It's been my observation that working on the field with Gaelic football players, soccer players, football players, that they've been kept off the field by recurrent hamstring strains. After the rehabilitation process is done and the rehab is completed, we continue to see these same athletes return into our clinic four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 20 weeks later. And we thought we were missing something. What are we doing that we can't keep these athletes from sustaining a, another hamstring strain? I have to say, when we delved further into the subject, we saw that this is a, a, a really big problem in the NFL, in uh, European soccer leagues, in Australian rural footballs, even in baseball, there was a high reoccurrence rate among athletes. We thought that we were missing something. So, something in our rehabilitation process after the first strain was not occurring. So we looked into what's called length and state eccentrics. Length and state eccentrics is different than, than um, regular hamstring eccentrics because it's done with the hamstring muscle in a maximally stretched position. Okay, all my career and throughout, throughout the world, we've been rehabilitating hamstrings in a shortened position. Okay, so based on that, we looked at some of the work by other researchers and found that a weakness exists at the end range in a stretched position. And we want to see if we can, if we change that to get strong at that end range, when the when the hamstring is a totally lengthened position, can we decrease the incidence of reoccurrences? Before the biotic system, we just did Nordic hamstring exercises, which is an exercise done in a shortened position, and it's kind of hard to do in injured athletes. The difference between the length and state eccentrics and the other exercises are what we think is happening is that the muscle is most vulnerable at that length and state position for re-injury, where that weakness may exist compared to the non-injured leg. And we can actually test that. Using a Biodex uh, System 4, we can test, is there a difference in that length and state it, um, in, the injured, in the injured hamstring versus the uninjured hamstring? If you, if you look at most hamstring strains, most hamstring strains occur while the athlete is sprinting, whether it be football, soccer, Australian rules football. And in Australian rules football, when the athlete bends down to pick up a ball with his foot, and bends down to pick up the ball at the same time at his waist and they're sprinting, that hamstring is at a maximum length and state. So what we do with the Biodex is we can reproduce that position and we can strengthen, strengthen the hamstring in that maximum length and state. So Chris sustained his hamstring sprinting. He started with therapy here about three or four weeks ago. We started with some isometrics in a short run position in an intermediate position, and then we're now at a lengthened position back about three weeks ago. He's been on the biodex in the seated position and doing um, eccentrics from zero degrees knee flexion to full extension. Now he's able to, last session, he was able to get ma maximum 100% contraction of resisting eccentrically throughout the full range of motion. So what we've done now is we put him in the lengthened state. And the lengthened state is with the hamstring Extended at, extended at the hip, okay? And then he's gonna be extended at the knee. What he's gonna do is he's gonna resist the dynamometer pulling his leg into full extension. So that his hamstrings will work into a lengthened state. All right, Chris, as the dynamometer takes you up, I want you to resist your leg from getting straight, okay? So up and resist, resist, resist. Good, and fight it, Chris, fight it, fight it as it's extension, good and fight it, nice job, okay? Once you can resist 100% through that full shortened range, we'll lengthen it out to a full range of motion in the lengthened state. This is the final phase of the rehabilitation process with people that have hamstring strains. 
uh, to prevent reoccurrences. What we have Chris doing here is uh, full range of motion, length and state, isolated eccentrics. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask Chris through the whole range of motion to resist all the way. So you're going to relax on this piece, okay. and as the dynamo takes you up, resist, 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 resist. Good. And then relax on the way down. Okay. okay. This is a position where most people, we theoretically think, injure their hamstrings. Okay. While well, extended at the hip and extended at the knee, fully lengthened state. Okay. So we're having you build that muscle up in that lengthened state. Look at your torques here. Good. You can see how you're doing. You're resisting here. Good. And that's pretty consistent. So the next test is 20 degrees below parallel. Okay. It should lock there. Okay. I'm going to hit go. And what you're going to do, you're going to pull back hard. Pull, 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 pull. Keep pulling, keep pulling, and relax. So the next position is going to be that what we call that neutral position. Okay. okay. So I'm going to bring you up. Good. All right. We're going to test you now. Two maximum contractions. Okay. Okay. <coughs> pull, 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 pull. Keep pulling. Best you got. Come on. Pull. Good job. See your torque production right here. And you can see as you're getting a little bit uh, more in the length and state, uh -huh. you're getting a little bit weaker, aren't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. The final, the final uh, position is in that fully lengthened state position. All right. Now let's get you all the way up to that fully lengthened position. This is what we feel is a critical position. What we found in our study is that when 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 athletes have that have had a hamstring tear don't get this length and state strength even to the uninjured leg they're more susceptible for re-injury okay so it behooves us to get this as strong as possible and equal to the opposite leg and what we're doing now is we're actually objectively testing your end range length and state torque production and comparing it to the other leg okay, okay. so here we go pull 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 Good. So let me tell you a little bit about a paper that we just published in the Journal of Sport Rehabilitation. We took amateur athletes, professional athletes, and everyday, everyday uh, weekend warrior athletes that had sustained a hamstring strain. And what we did was we put them on the Biodex system, system 4 and we rehabilitated them and tested them isometrically and developed a length tension curve in the length and state to see if they would not have a recurrent injury if they equaled their length and state strength between the legs. We had 50 athletes enrolled in the study who sustained a hamstring strain. We wanted to see if we could prevent reoccurrences to occur. So we put them through a three-phase rehabilitation program which included Biodex System 4 length and state eccentrics as part of the rehab program in the final phase of rehabilitation. Out of the 50 athletes, 43 completed the whole three phases of rehabilitation. Eight of those athletes chose for one reason or another that they felt better and they would go back to competition at their own um, volition. At their final session of rehabilitation, we isometrically tested on the Biodex System 4 each athlete and we plotted a length tension curve. And what we saw was that in the injured legs of the eight non-compliant uh, athletes, there was a 43% deficit at the length and state in hamstring strength. There was no deficit in the compliant patients at the length and state in hamstring strength. What we're really amazed to see is when we followed up these folks for two years, we were amazed to see that not one of the 43 who completed the rehabilitation and were tested and had equal strength sustained a re-injury, while four of the eight were re-injured within about six weeks and had to start the rehabilitation process all over again.